it's Saturday night, which means it's stand-up time. Please welcome my stand-up guest, the fantastic Mr. Ed Gamble! <laughs> Excellent. I think we may as well crack on, hadn't we? Yeah, yeah let's move this bad boy along. Um, I'll start. Uh, username. Ed Gamble. It's me. <laughs> Password. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> let's log in for the comedy. <laughs> That's it. That is literally the beginning. Um, <laughs> I did that opening in Leeds uh, about three weeks ago and someone shouted from the back, Password incorrect. <laughs> Please try again or contact your service provider. Uh, now, uh, now, I'd like to tell you a story. Um, before I tell you the story, I'll take a quick straw poll. Uh, who here has heard of Radio 1 rap DJ Tim Westwood? Yeah. Who here is a fan of Radio 1 rap DJ Tim Westwood? Yeah. Good, you're going to like this story. Um, <laughs> uh, I interviewed to be Tim Westwood's booking agent. Um, I was a little bit nervous before I went in for the interview because the only experience I'd ever had of him up until this point uh, was when I saw him live. Uh, has anyone here seen Tim Westwood live? No. Basically, when he's live, uh, what he does, he DJs, he puts on the beginning of a song that he likes, gets quite bored, and puts on another song. Um, <laughs> you're essentially in the car with him while he's fucking about with the radio. Um, <laughs> now, uh, something else he does when he's live, and this is amazing, if he feels like it's going a bit awkward, or he's losing the crowd, he'll just drop in an explosion sound effect. Um, to go, fuck Tim, I'm losing him, come on, Tim. <laughs> got them back. Um, <laughs> now, uh, on this particular occasion, uh, this is when I saw him live a few years ago. Uh, these were his opening words. Now, I apologise, because this is horrible. Um, but I've been assured he said this before as well. He walked out onto the stage, and he looked at the assembled throng, and he said, All the girls with dirty pussies... <laughs> put your hands in the air. <laughs> put your hands down, madam. Um, <laughs> something to be proud of. If that was me doing one of my hip-hop gigs that I do, um, <laughs> I'd come out onto the stage and say, right, hello, hip-hop and all that, welcome, uh, <laughs> raise the roof, etc. Um, <laughs> all the girls with dirty pussies, pop your hands in the air. Right, everyone with your hand up, get out. <laughs> that is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> you do not come out with a mucky tuppence. <laughs> And your dress is lovely, you've done your makeup, you put your jewellery on, yet you have left the house with a stinky lily. <laughs> At least a lemon scented baby wipe around the key area <laughs> as you leave your. Right, gigs cancel, I can smell it. <laughs> oh, I can oh, Gigs go. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I wouldn't do that last bit. Um... <laughs> So, so that's why I was a little bit nervous about being him, um, because of that. But now, I was a little bit nervous as well, because you may have noticed I'm not the most hip-hop gentleman in the world. I'm not even the most hip-hop gentleman in my house. Um, and I live with just my mum. Um, but then again, my mum is Queen Latifah. So, uh, now, I'm actually a little bit posh. You might have picked that up. Um, I'm a little bit street, because uh, I do a bit of... I do a bit of rap. I don't do a bit of rap. Uh, I listen to a bit of rap. Uh, but uh, I'm a little bit posh as well. I occupy what is essentially an awkward middle ground between hip-hop and posh. So, uh, I do a drive-by shooting. <laughs> but on a pheasant. <laughs> I wouldn't pop a cap in a man's ass, but I would doff a cap to a man's wife. <laughs> and guys, don't worry about messing with my homies, screwing my crew, that's fine. But if you cut the nose off the brie, you fuckers are going down. <laughs> so stay away from my cheese balls. <laughs> right, I went in to meet him, genuinely terrified. I went dressed quite posh. I'm not sure what happened in my head. Obviously, in my head, I thought, you know, Ed, it's Tim Westwood. Why not go dressed hippity-hoppity? Uh, <laughs> but then a little middle-class devil clearly popped up on my shoulder and just went, no, Ed, it's a job interview. Go in full Marks and Spencer's gear. Uh, <laughs> so I went looking like a prime Wally, basically. Uh, I went and sat in the corridor outside this man's office. Outside his office, there was a box of condoms <laughs> with his face on. 
<laughs> because he sponsored a safe sex campaign. All right, wait for this. Strap it up before you slap it up. <laughs> the man's foul. I had one of those condoms. Uh, my friend Ray, he's my best friend, I hope he doesn't mind me saying that. Uh, my friend Ray got me one of those condoms, right? We both had one, actually. They're both gone now. Um... <laughs> no, not like that. Water balloon fight. Um, I opened up this condom. It says, strap it up before you slap it up on the front. You open it up, it's covered in filthy phrases. It's exactly what will not get you in the mood. The first thing you have to read when you open that condom is they call me Darth Vader because I rock a big helmet. <laughs> Absolutely disgusting. You wade through this mire of filth, flat by bad choice of words, flat by flat. Right? <laughs> you take the condom out. The last thing you have to read is follow me on Twitter. <laughs> As if you're supposed to go. Oh, it's very exciting, isn't it? Dear? I don't know why she's on the floor, but um, <laughs> it's very exciting, isn't it? I can't wait for this. Oh, wait there. <laughs> Oh, she's gone. Um, so I went in to meet him. Now, the interview, it didn't go particularly well. Um, he didn't really like me because I was a little bit posh. He genuinely turned out to be quite a nice man. I think he's a bit of an eccentric. Uh, and he should be embraced as such, but he's quite a nice bloke. Uh, but he didn't like me because I was too posh. Uh, it ended pretty swiftly when he looked at me and said, Ed, I don't think we can hire you because you don't have any Pacific experience. <laughs> Now, at this point, every English-educated bone in my body screamed at me, Ed, don't correct him. <laughs> don't correct him. But it just fell out of my mouth. I said, well, Mr Westwood, <laughs> I think you'll find you mean specific. <laughs> he just stared at me. It was really, really awkward. Uh, and all I could think to do at that point was look him dead in the eye and just go... <laughs> is anyone here with their, with their dad tonight? My dad um, is, is basically a Wally. Um, I'm, I'm going to say that on air. I apologise, Dad, obviously. Please keep giving me pocket money. Um, <laughs> uh, my dad's quite embarrassing, but I enjoy it. I love it. I really want to follow him round for 24 hours and just watch him fuck up every minute. Um, <laughs> uh, this, this was amazing. This was when I was a bit younger. My dad took me into a baker's... Uh, presumably to complete his conspiracy of making me the same body shape as him. Um, he's basically a capital D, if you can imagine that. Um, I'm sort of lowercase at the moment, but we're hitting the caps lock and hopefully we're going to get there quite soon. Uh, he took me to a, into a baker's. He strode up to the counter uh, and he said to the lady behind the counter, Hello! Uh, because he's from a Dickens novel. Uh, he said, Hello! Uh, she said, Hello, because uh, she was from then. Um, he said, we'll have the Danish boog, please. Now, uh, she looked at us like many of you are looking at me now, uh, because the Danish boog doesn't exist. Uh, not a thing. Um, never been invented, probably never will. Uh, uh, so she obviously said, no, sir, I've never, never heard of that. I'm afraid we can't give you something that doesn't exist. Uh, so he replied, the Danish boog. Um, you'll notice no drop-off in confidence between the two requests. <laughs> he just thought, it must be her that's wrong. We'll plough on. Um, uh, so she again said, sorry, sir, there's genuinely no such thing as, as a Danish boog. Uh, he then pointed to the chalkboard behind her and said, the Danish boog. Um, she turned round, looked at the chalkboard, turned back to us and said, the Danish 800 gram. <laughs> He's supposed to be a lawyer, he can't read. <laughs> now, to get out of this situation, I could tell he was a little bit embarrassed. To get out of this Danish Boog 800 gram situation, his response immediately was, no, that's too heavy. <laughs> As if he'll have a Boog, which doesn't exist, but he won't have one over 700 grams. <laughs> that's far too hefty for Andrew Gamble. Um, so that, that, that is my dad. Uh, now, I noticed, uh, I noticed when I came on tonight, you, you sir, uh, you asked me a question, didn't you? I did. You asked me a question. Uh, do you remember what it was? No. I'll jog your memory for you. Uh, a lot of people at the back may not have been able to hear that. A lot of people next to you, sir, may not have been able to hear that. You may not have been able to hear that. Uh, but you asked me a question. You said, Ed, you look quite unhealthy. Why don't you eat fruit? <laughs> Which, you know, looking back on it, it seemed quite harsh. 
Um, but I'm willing to let you off and give all of you the answer. Uh, basically, uh, I don't eat fruit because of anagrams. <laughs> don't worry, I'll explain it. I'm not just going to walk off to that. Um, uh, basically, any fruit that I try and eat, uh, it turns out that an anagram of that fruit is something that I'm ethically against. Now, this is possibly the most contrived premise you will ever hear. Um, what I will say is if you hop on board early, it's very rewarding. Um, if you get left behind at any point, it's utter dog shit. Uh, so let's hop on board, let's go. Uh, quick example, uh, the pineapple. I can't have a pineapple uh, because I'm against bestiality. As we all should be. I'm against bestiality and pineapple is an anagram of ape nipple. <laughs> Quite a few of you on board. Some of you still at ports. Uh, <laughs> don't worry, you've got time. Finish your tea and, uh, and let's get on. Um, I can't have a mango. Uh, can't have a mango because I'm against male people leaving. <laughs> and mango is an anagram of man. Go. <laughs> Bless you for clapping, but they genuinely get worse. Uh, <laughs> melon! I can't have a melon, because I hate lemon. <laughs> and melon is an anagram of lemon. <laughs> can't have a lemon. <laughs> Just hate them, we've established that. Um, this one's a bit blue, so uh, be careful with this one. Um, tangerine, I can't have a tangerine, because I'm against anal oral sex. And tangerine is an anagram of Eaton Ring. <laughs> Those of you who have just joined us on board have immediately gone down to the sick bay. Um, <laughs> pomegranate. I can't have a pomegranate. This one's ridiculous. Can't have a pomegranate because I don't think the X Men should ever be sexually violent. <laughs> and pomegranate is an anagram of magneto rape. <laughs> I know technically Magneto is not an X-Man, uh, but we can't get bogged down in saying the Brotherhood. I don't have enough time. <laughs> this is the last one and then I'll leave you. Current. Can't have a current. No one has a current, do they? No, one, no one's ever walked into anywhere and said, oh, I'll have a current, please. Um, they would specify which current they want, um, but that's not how anagrams work. Uh, I can't have a current uh, because I'm against pirate swearing. And current is an anagram of R cunt. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll be back down. We'll Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Ed.